Take a look at guys, of course this is Jazz, the male green anaconda, and of course in this enclosure we have Ivy over here and Ariana. She's in the far back over here, but of course Jazz was in shed when we got him, and take a look at this. A beautiful shed coming out of here. It looks like a one piece shed. Looks absolutely amazing, and he looks beautiful now and he is a really good snake I mean I tell you what, he's as tame as Ariana and Ivy which is great so we have four anacondas here obviously Ariana Ivy Jazz and of course Viride all of them are unbelievably docile animals super tame that you can handle that is awesome because not all the time green anacondas are that way but with the beautiful new shed he looks absolutely incredible and of course so many people make the mistake of measuring their sheds and thinking like all right that's how long my snake is and uh, we all know that that's usually not the case, but let's go ahead and put it to the test. So I set the shed out here in the sun to actually dry out a little bit. What I'm going to do is actually measure the length of it, and we'll get an idea. And then we'll measure jazz, and we'll get an idea of what the difference is. Looks like we have about 149 inches. So let's go ahead and get jazz and see how long he is. And of course, Mike here is going to help me get jazz out, and we're going to go ahead and use the old string technique to measure him out. Remember, 149 inches on the shed. Let's see how long jazz actually is. Oh, come on, come on, man. It's almost like he's wet. <laughs> wow, he's so strong. Jazz. Woo wow, Jazz is not as, uh, as calm as the other ones as far as it's just kind of more flighty and stuff like that, but maybe it was just as he's in the water. Keep, keep his head, don't let him bite me. No, he's super tame, he's super tame, look at him. He's absolutely amazing. So let's set him down on the ground. Wait, I can't, he's got me. Stop messing around. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna have to kind of restrain him a little bit. You know, just keep him like to a point where I can get the string. All right, here we go. Are you starting at his tail? Well, yeah, I'm gonna start his tail. He doesn't like his tail touch. <laughs> Oh, he said he's nice, right? He's nice, okay, he's fine. Okay, okay. I just gotta follow the contour of his entire body because I don't want to add inches or subtract inches. So just go around just really slightly. It's a great technique to actually measure snake. The only other way to measure these guys is to actually build two boards and then have them climb through those boards. And of course, they'll climb in a straight line. If they climb that straight line, you'll be able to then measure how long they are in the boards. But when he's actually like this, you just kind of follow him along. It's a little bit difficult, but not too bad. We're almost there. Oh, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. Almost there. He moves. Oh, oh. Then we're gonna get him right to the tip of the head, right to the tip of his nose. Okay, so this is how long he is right here. Can you grab a marker? Sure. <laughs> Mikey, what are you doing? We got a snake on the loose here. Okay, you don't move that fast. Only your hands. <laughs> you move fast faster than you. That's probably true. All right, so I'm just gonna put a black mark on this right here so we know where it is. Yes, where am I? Can I have that back? Stretch it out all the way. Now for the reveal. Wait, wait, what right. do you get? Well, I, he was 149. I'm gonna say I this is a... I don't know feet. I'm not that mathematician. <laughs> what, that's uh, 12 foot uh, five inches. 12 foot, so 12 foot five inches. I'm gonna say this is 136 inches. So you think he's just about 11 foot? Think about 11 foot. Okay. Well, let's see. That's fair. I would Hold say probably about 10 and a half. Hold at the end. Right there. So 149, and this is actually 114 inches. Nine foot, five inches. Think about that. 114, 35 inch difference. So just under three feet. Just, yeah, just under three foot. So that's the difference. If you're actually measuring a snake shed, 35 inch difference in the size of the shed and of course the size of the snake. Now the thing is about it is number one, you gotta remember the snake shed is this when it's on a snake and it's like this, right? So that's gonna stretch it out more and it's got some elasticity. So it's actually gonna stretch and stuff like that, especially once it's wet, like in the water, it's gonna have a little bit of a stretch. 35 inches, that even surprised me, people. So that gives you an idea. Don't go ahead and measure your ball python and tell me it's eight foot because of the shed, because it's not eight foot because of the shed. That gives you an idea, that's science right there. Mikey, we just taught these people science. So uh, I'm sure you guys seen the challenge with me and my BFF Mike. You guys are talking smack in the comments. So I'm gonna get Lucky out and I'm gonna get some redemption here. Well, I'm not gonna get Lucky out. I'm gonna ask Mike to get out Lucky and then I'm gonna hold him. No, 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 I took him on the challenge. You can get him out. <laughs> oh my God, look at him already. <laughs> this is just <this> good. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. So, Mike, could you walk me through how I should go about this? You're screwed now. <laughs> you already woke him up. I didn't wake him up. He was already awake. Jay, don't. He will bite me in the face. It's not funny. <laughs> okay. So, let's get him to strike first. I well, think that's, that's not good. good. That makes oh, it worse. I thought that's what you're supposed to do. They strike, strike him and then pull him. 7,000 times a minute, and you're going to make him strike one time first just to get him going? Okay. 
I think that I don't want redemption. So, sorry guys, you're just gonna have to keep talking smack in the comments because I just quite literally can't do it. You want you want me to show you how to do yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Give All me right. this camera angle. This is easy. Just go Boss like this. Boss is done sneaking up right here. Wow, I mean, Noah, you're already so much better than I am. And we're right here, right here. I don't want to film. Give me the camera. You're gonna drop it. I won't drop it. I am filming nothing though. He is so wrapped up on the string. Oh my God! No, did he get you? No. Okay. <laughs> you get way more dramatic than he has to be. I can't get him off the freaking wood. He's so wrapped on there. Wow, that was that was a far one. That was that basically was good. my freaking note. Jesus. I can't get him. He's, look at how many coils he has on that stingy. <laughs> I don't want to film this I anymore. can't rip him off. Okay. It's okay. Good he, job. He's too wrapped up there. I'll, I'll tell you what. Noah got your redemption, <laughs> but you did not. I did not. Mustache gang. Woo! Ooh, back in the bar check kitchen, which means only one thing, and that's that we're gonna bring you a HelloFresh deal today. But I get to eat something really scrumptious. I've been working with HelloFresh for over two years now, and literally, it's life changing, guys. Listen, I am a busy person. I don't have time to go to the grocery store. This stuff comes right to my door, fresh and ready to go, with amazing recipes. Right? I don't have to do hardly anything, and I love the fact that its carbon footprint is 25% less than store bought food. That's pretty incredible, and it comes to you in either recycled or ready to recycled content which is amazing so the only hard part about this to be honest with you is to choose what to actually make here we have our uh, firecracker meatballs right here we have a uh, sweet and smoky pork tenderloin or we have chicken sausage spaghetti bolognese now come on people what am I supposed to do here so I tell you what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna mix this up like this and I'm just gonna see what comes up and whatever I decide all right this is the winner right here that's right, firecracker meatballs, people. That's what we're gonna make. And this is the box right here of all the stuff. We're gonna need some ground beef. That's right, right here, fresh ground green. And let's see what else we have in here. We have some green beans. You know, I like green beans. When I was a kid, I hated green beans. But I don't like onions or scallions, so I'm gonna throw those aside. Whatever works for you, we've got a whole bunch of pour this out right here. Look at this. Oh, I have a feeling this sriracha is gonna be for firecracker. And kids, do me one favor. Before you start cooking, wash your hands. Now let's get to it. Indulge in fall bounty with HelloFresh seasonal selection of savory sides and autumn themed desserts. Mix and match in HelloFresh market with sweets and beverages like the baked pumpkin cinnamon rolls, ooh doggy, mini pumpkin cheesecakes, apricot pecan biscuit bakes, and special lattes, ooh doggy. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. HelloFresh has more five star reviews than any other meal kit so you know when you get something delicious from HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items each week, including ready-to-eat sides, sandwiches, and soups. They also offer quick and easy recipes that take only 20 minutes or less, easy cleanup, and low prep options. Increase your HelloFresh box serving so that you can easily use leftover for lunches. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my promo code 14BrianB and get 14 free meals plus free shipping. And now my favorite part, of course, is the tasting. I tell you what, it's always absolutely amazing. Mm -mm. That's a damn good meatball right there. I tell you what, guys, you guys can go over to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code 14 Brian B, and you can get 14 free meals, including shipping. For now, I'm not going to talk anymore because it's just too darn good not to eat it. Remember the other day I actually showed you that clutch that started to hatch out that was actually a pin specter that was bred to a dragonfly yellow belly as well as a vanilla bamboo woma? Well, they've all hatched out and there's some pretty interesting results here and I wanna dive into this a little bit, but what I first showed you was this animal here that hatched out that I thought originally was like, how could we have gotten an ivory, which it definitely wasn't an ivory. Not exactly sure what this is going on. There's another animal in here, but nevertheless, we've got some really cool stuff. This right here is the firefly super stripe, so a yellow belly and a specter and lelically going. And then there's just all kinds of other really beautiful animals. This is actually the pin super stripe. Looks like a fire too. So it looks like it's a fire, a pin stripe, and a super stripe, which is really amazing. Then we got some really beautiful, beautiful animals in here. These two here, I actually believe to be a vanilla pastel specter fire pinstripe, right? So these are basically vanilla dragonfly yellow belly specters. 
Uh, really beautiful animals, really came out well. And then one of these animals, of course, it was dual fathered. Is this is a cool animal here. This is actually the bamboo gene that came through on this one. So this one looks like a vanilla bamboo fire pinstripe Woma ball python. Absolutely wonderful. But again, the two animals I found to be really interested that I want to take a closer look at is this animal right here, which is just basically looks like maybe a lemon blast that has some really interesting colors. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And then, of course, this mystery animal here. And to really get into it, we have to talk about the mystery ball python. So to really talk about it, it came from the origins of this animal here, which is what we call the mystery ball python. That just basically popped out of a pinstripe clutch that just made no sense. It was like this patternless, wacky thing, definitely affecting the pattern a ton, and it was kind of just a complete mystery, so we call it the mystery ball python, because we had no idea why it was patternless and how it was crazy. And then, of course, when we bred this animal, we produced some really crazy offspring. Now, we ended up producing five babies from the mystery female. All five of them were completely different looking and really strange. This is, a, again, a weird one. Again, it's patternless, but it's got some weird kind of speckling throughout of it. Never seen a ball python like this completely out of the blue this came out it was just weird I mean there's definitely something amazing going on what it is I don't know I don't know if it's an allelic thing I don't know if there's like a co-dominant incomplete dominant thing happening that we just don't know about I don't know what is going on this one was an absolute ripper but there was another one that really made me think about the clutch that we just hatched and that's this ball python right here again much like that little baby that we showed it has just a very interesting blushed out pattern to it right it's not like a normal pinstripe and a pastel, which is what this is supposed to be. This should be just a pin pastel or a lemon blast, but why is the pattern so kind of almost like a jaguar-y type of look to it, right? It's so interesting. And if you notice, this baby and this one right here is a yearling look almost identical. I mean, when this was a baby, this is exactly what it looked like. And of course, there's other babies in this clutch that look unusual as well, but there was really a kind of correlation between this animal and that animal. So even though the mystery female I showed you a little bit ago had nothing to do with this clutch, the pinstripe that kind of was lineage from that mystery ball python that's related to it produce these animals. So obviously there's again a hidden gene going on in a bunch of my pinstripes and I've got to somehow figure out what they are. Now we have three different females that we know have this mystery gene in it. Now it's a matter of back engineering them or reverse engineering to figure out. The good part is is this guy and the other males that from the clutch last year are all ready to breed this year and we can breed them out and start to figure out what the heck is going on. I don't know if it's going to be easy or not but that's what makes this whole thing so much fun is that you have have something that's so unusual you don't know what the potential is and it's going to be awesome to figure it out i'm excited guys because we have the new fall reptile army gear out now it's so new that i don't even have it yet i'm going to get mine maybe next week and i'll show you what it is but uh definitely some cool designs coming out so if you're into fall and you want to get some cool new designs go to reptilearmy.com join the army we're trying to get out there we need you as our soldiers going out there wearing our gear talking to people telling people like wow it's thought provoking right when someone sees a really cool design with a reptile like what is that all about now you can go out there and say hey it's about this and i think this fall line is going to be really cool we have backpacks we have hoodies we have long sleeve we have socks we have all kinds of stuff and next week we're actually dropping the halloween one so those people that love halloween as much as i do make sure to go to reptilearmy.com keep an eye on it because next week that drops and we have some really fun and cool designs for Halloween. So I know I'm super excited the way things are. And we have all the past designs too. As a matter of fact, most of them now can be bought in hoodies and long sleeve now that fall is here. So go to reptilearmy.com, join the army. And since we're talking about sheds earlier in the vlog, guess who shed out? My guy Joker here. Of course, Joker is the scaleless Texas rat snake. Just such an unusually cool animal. I love this guy so much. And again, when people come to the Reptarium, this is always an animal that they love to hold because it feels so different, right? It feels like gecko skin or feels just so different like human skin whatever the case is but of course he shed out and a lot of people always ask to scale a snake shed and this is the answer yes they shed and you can kind of see in the shed how the scaleless parts are you can see where the remnant scales are and where those kind of smooth parts are almost like you know sunburn peeling or something like that that's how a scale snake sheds and this is a perfect shed which is going to be really good because i'm going to hang on to this that way when people come here and ask that question do scale a snake 
snake shed, I can actually show them this shed because I think it's pretty cool. So uh, yes, scale of snake shed. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, can you do me a huge favor? Right over here is a playlist. You can just hit one or two of those videos. If you want to watch more of me, if you don't mind, on this side, can you go ahead and hit that subscription button? It would mean so much to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.